Good day, students. Once again, I'll be doing this question one on cost and management accounting one. And this question, it requires to calculate the prime cost as usual, conversion cost, total production cost, be mindful of that, total manufacturing cost per unit, then it becomes easy when you start with this one and you come to the cost per unit. Then after total period cost, remember these are non-production cost, meaning the costs that are not related to production. They have nothing to do with the production. It's normally sales and administration cost. Then after we are required to calculate the total cost of the operation, meaning we are combining now the production cost together with the period cost, meaning the non-manufacturing cost, with the manufacturing cost to calculate the total cost of the operation, including the sales and administration of the product. When we sell the product, how much did we incur? Then we have to calculate the net profit, and this is a normal question to end with. Question number G, calculating the net profit. Now let's go straight to the information provided after knowing what we are required to calculate. Now, question one says, Xerox Limited is a manufacturing company producing a product called Zero Fifty. The costs and expenses incurred during the year ended 31st of January 2015 are as follows. We are given the materials purchased, which is direct. And be mindful of the fact that this is the material that was purchased, not necessarily used in the production process. Then we bought 285,000 and the indirect was 45,000 and the total of the, tar of the material that was bought was 310,000. This is what was bought, not necessarily what was used material that was used or issued to production now into production department it was direct 280,000 and indirect 30,200 and these are the numbers that we'll be focusing on when we calculate both the total cost per unit and the total cost in total our wages are divided into direct being 120,000 and indirect being 40,000. Please be mindful that all the indirect costs are manufacturing overheads. And all the indirect costs are manufacturing overheads. All the direct costs, they, they are production costs, meaning they relate to production. So now we come to uh, the other aspect of the labor where they say another part of the labor was administration and selling labor cost of 100,000. And all of this is included to the total of 260,000. So now that 260,000 is made of the three figures, uh, direct uh, labor, indirect labor, and administration and selling labor cost, meaning the cost of labor that was paid to administrative staff and the staff that were doing the sales of our product. Remember, these have nothing to do with the production cost. These two are not related to production. It's non-manufacturing cost. We normally call them period costs. Rental paid was divided into 244,000 was for the factory and 120,000 was for administrative papers, which is a non-manufacturing cost or a period cost. Our electricity was also paid divided into 280% of the electricity, which is 80% of that 90,000 is for the factory, meaning it's a non-manufacturing, sorry, it's a manufacturing overhead cost. And 20% is a non-manufacturing cost, it's administration cost. Then our telephone is divided also into 240% is factory, meaning it's a manufacturing overhead, that 40%. Then the 60% um, will be administration telephone expense. And the total of the telephone is uh, given to us as a sum of 36,000 rands. 
insurance is 60% fake three equals 36,000. So they gave us the 60% and we are not given the amount. So now we need to determine how much is the total, which is the 100% of that 60%. So now we'll say 100 divided by 60. We multiply that by 36,000. Then this will give us 60,000, meaning the cost of the insurance in total was 60,000, of which 40% of that is administration cost. If we multiply that by 40%, we will get to 24,000 of the administration cost. I will also do calculate that a bit later on. Be mindful of this question because they gave you the 60% already, meaning they said uh, X, they said, let me say, some amount multiplying that figure by 60%. Then after they multiply the figure by 60%, they got 36,000. So now we are looking for the amount that was multiplied. That is why we'll divide here by 0 0.6, divide here by 0 0.6, 0 0.6 being 60%. Uh, 60 over 100 will give you 0 0.6. So this, uh, let me say, divide the by 60% so that it makes mathematical sense to everyone. We divide here by 60% and we divide here by 60%, which is 60 over 100. Now, I do not want to divide with two divisions. Well, some of you might be a little bit confused. 60 over 100. 60% cancel 60%. Therefore, now we'll be left with the whatever range or it could be whatever figure it is that you're looking for is equal to 30. So we are looking for the figure that was multiplied by 60% in order to get to the 36,000. So 36,000 times by uh, 36,000 times by 100 over 60. Therefore, now that is where we get the 60,000 rents. Therefore, now 24% of that or 40% or of that, which is 24,000, will be administration cost. Depreciation was also divided into two. 75% of the depreciation is a factory overhead and 25% of the depreciation is administration, meaning a non-manufacturing cost. Sales commission. Remember, commission is based on sales. We need to know how much was our sales revenue. And our sales amounted to 136,000 rands. Mm -hmm. So now with that 136,000 rands, we are then now able to multiply, or they've already given it to us 3% of sales. Then if sales were, if this was not given, we're going to calculate this um, using another approach of multiplying the sales by 3%. So now that will be a sales commission. Uh, let me check if the sales commission is it really. No, sales commission is a question mark. We have to calculate it. The units that we produced is the one that is 136,000 in terms of the units. And the unit sold was 120,000 rands. So now when it comes to a commission, we need to say the selling price times by the units that were sold, which is 120,000 the units that were sold at a price of 15 rand. So now we have to multiply those two and say 120,000, multiply this by a total of 15, and we get to 1,800,000 rands. Then we multiply this by 3%, which is the commission. Therefore, now the commission will amount to 54,000 rands because commission is always based on sales. So now this is the deepness of this question, not forgetting that here we had a total of 30, a total of 60,000 rands. Here we had a total of 60,000 rands. So now this is the information provided and I will be responding to this information in terms of calculating the prime cost. The prime cost are all the direct cost, direct material and direct labor only. So now this will be prime cost calculating the prime cost. 
uh, my prime cost is direct material always direct material and after we have the direct labor these are the prime cost direct labor our direct material and i think it was given as 280000 let me confirm i might be incorrect yes the one that was issued remember we are focusing on the material that was issued into production not the one that was purchased because not all that was purchased was all used in the production department we need to know how much is the cost of the material that was issued to the production department including the direct labor which we call them the prime cost 280000 is the figure that is given to us now we say to 80000 plus our direct labor if you remember direct labor amounted to 120000 prime cost is the sum of the direct material and direct labor so now we add the 120000 then after that will give us the total of the amount of the prime cost so now if we say uh, 280 plus 120 this will give us 400000 and 400000 will be what you call the prime cost this will be what you call the prime cost then after we go to requirement number b remember uh, let me just say here prime cost this is just additional to the next question that we'll be doing prime cost plus overheads equals total cost i will just leave that there hanging it's not part one of the question it's not part two it's just extra information that i'll be explaining a bit later in case i don't forget now under the second requirement we are required to calculate the conversion cost we are required to calculate the conversion cost we know that conversion cost is only direct material and uh, overheads conversion costs now which we know that it will be direct labor uh, plus all the manufacturing overheads now our direct labor is 120 thousand rents this should be 12 thousand 120 there should be a zero there there should be a zero there because they left space uh, there should be a zero third zero there please consider that i just took it slightly as 120,000 because of the way it's divided it's 120,000 uh, plus all the manufacturing overheads so now we need to say direct labor first direct labor plus manufacturing overheads remember manufacturing overheads are the costs that are not directly related to production the indirect costs or the indirect manufacturing cost then now uh, we come to our overheads or uh, let me say fake three overheads to be specific because they are used in the language meaning the overheads that have to do with the fake three meaning the production process factory overheads we have a quite a lot of them a list of them that i need to list the first one is uh, let me check we have our factory overheads that start with the indirect material our indirect material is thirty thousand three hundred. so now we start with the indirect material factory overheads indirect material Our indirect material is 30,200. 30,200. Then we come to the indirect labor. Indirect labor is given to us. And we did have indirect labor, and our indirect labor cost is an amount of 40,000 rands. We copy that 40,000 and we paste as it is. It's already in total plus 40,000 rands. Then after we go to the next manufacturing overhead, and the next manufacturing overhead that we have is 
rent that was paid and the factory rent which is a manufacturing of our head rent is 144,000 we copy and we paste that and then we have rent and our rent is 144,000 rents then we come to the next overhead that is provided to us we are looking only for the manufacturer factory overheads electricity and water 80 percent is the factory so now that means 80 percent of the 90,000 80 percent of the 90,000 runs so now we can say 90,000 times by 80 percent 90,000 times by 80 percent which is 72,000 runs so now we go and we record electricity and water electricity plus water which is 90,000 times by 80 percent it gave us 72,000 runs think I'm right on that not looking for that one not looking for you yet we have 72,000 runs as our electricity and water for this production then we go to the next factory overheads our next factory overheads it is the telephone 40 percent which is factory 40 percent of the 36,000 so now we have our telephone 40 percent of 36,000 then we say telephone we had the total of the telephone another part of the telephone which is 40 percent was related to the production but it was an indirect cost so now we multiply that by 40 percent which will be 36,000 multiply this by 40 percent it gives us 14,400 rands that will be the 40 percent that it relates to the factory or meaning that relates to production then now we have insurance 60 percent which we know that it is 36,000 rents they've given that to us already insurance is 36,000 rents these are all the manufacturing overheads insurance is 36,000 rents it is given to us then we look for another manufacturing overhead or factory overhead we have depreciation of which 75% of the depreciation of that 120,000 relates to the factory. So now let us record that which relates to the factory. 120,000, we multiply this by 75%. So 90,000 must be recorded as our factory depreciation, meaning the depreciation of the machines that are used in the factory not the depreciations of the asset that are not production related the amount is 90,000 which is uh, 120,000 multiplied that by 75 percent so now that will be our manufacturing overheads then after that we search if do we have any other manufacturing overhead no remember sales commission is when we sell the product so the sales commission have nothing to do with the production because it's after the product has been manufactured or completed or processed or finished that we will have to sell it and pay commission to someone who sells that product so now these are the manufacturing overheads that i have on board that i needed to take into consideration so now we can have the total of all this manufacturing overheads from here up to the bottom then now i will write the total of all this manufacturing overheads which the total will be 30200 plus 40000 i will need to recalculate plus 144000 uh, plus 72000 plus 14,400 plus 36,000 runs plus 90,000 runs and the sum is 426,600 
this is the total of the manufacturing overheads that I have 426,600 is the total manufacturing cost that I have calculated. So now the total of the manufacturing overheads plus 120,000 of the direct labor will give me what we call the conversion cost. So now the conversion cost will be 546,600 rands. 546,600 rands will be what we call a conversion cost. And such questions will normally have four marks to five marks. 546,400 is our conversion cost. Now that will be how we calculate our conversion cost, direct labor plus factory overheads or plus manufacturing overheads, both fixed and variable. Remember, uh, administrative expenses are not manufacturing overheads. The, the part of them can be, but our, money, our administrative cost must not be accounted into the manufacturing overheads. That is why now we say a uh, part of the rent that was paid, another one is administration, another one is administration, another one is administration. Administrative costs have nothing to do with the production department. So now hence we are only focusing on the rent that was paid specifically for the factory, meaning the factory is the department that produces the product. So now when we calculate our factory overheads or manufacturing overheads, we only focus on the ones that have to do with the production. Uh, the administration cost and the selling cost are not related to overheads. They are not production overheads. So now I have covered uh, the second requirement. <clears throat> now I can go to the total production cost and the total production cost out of two marks. We don't have to be recalculating everything from the beginning. Now that we are calculating the total production cost, then now we say production cost. Let me check if is it uh, in total or also per unit. Okay, we have to our total production cost and we are calculating now the manufacturing cost per unit. Remember, these questions could have been combined because production cost is the same as manufacturing cost. Let me repeat that. Production cost is the same as the manufacturing. So now if they wanted, they could have said total production cost per unit. Let me just write that on top. Total production cost per unit. So the minute we get to this production cost in total, we divide it by the number of units that were manufactured in order for us to get to the uh, cost per unit, which will be in response to the next question. So now we already know that the units that were produced or that were manufactured were 136,000. If we divide that by this cost that we'll be getting here, then we'll be responding already to requirement number D, calculating the production cost per unit. Now let us uh, calculate our production cost per unit. We know that our production cost, in fact, this is the total production cost in total. They said total production cost. We know that it is direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overheads. Now we need to say just direct material. Our direct material, if we still remember, it is 280,000 rands. This was our direct material that was issued to production, not the 285,000 that was bought. Then now we need uh, to say plus conversion cost. Very easy if you do that plus conversion cost. Why do we say plus conversion cost? Because conversion costs are made of the two components. Conversion costs are made of the direct uh, labor plus manufacturing overheads. And when we are looking for the total cost, we are looking for the material labor and overheads, meaning we are looking for the material plus conversion cost. So material plus conversion cost will give us the total cost. Or if you want, you can say prime cost plus overheads will give you the total cost. That is why I said I might come back to this one because prime cost plus overheads will give you total cost. And at the same time, 
conversion cost plus material will give you total cost. Either way you calculate it, you still get to the same figures of the total cost that you will be required to calculate at any stage in your costing life. Now, plus our conversion cost, which is uh, for 510 something, 510, 46,600, 510, This was our conversion cost. So now we can add the two and that will give us our total cost of production or our manufacturing cost. I'm not looking for that again. That's what I'm looking for. So now plus 280,000, this will give us our total cost of production as 826,600 rands. This will be how we calculate our total cost of production. Remember, as I mentioned to you that when you're calculating the cost of production, <clears throat> you can also say prime cost, uh, plus prime cost plus overheads. I said you can say prime cost plus overheads. So remember, prime cost is direct material plus direct labor. So now all that you need is only to add the overheads in order for you to get to the total cost of production. Our prime cost were 400,000 rands. So now we can say prime cost of 400,000 rands and our, our overheads, we calculated them to be here the factory overheads, 426,600. So now we can say 426,600 and you see how much do we get if does it give us the same figure. 400,000 plus 426,600 and I think you can see that it definitely it will give us the same 426,600 as our total cost of production. So now our total cost of production is this amount. If we need cost per unit now, what do we do? We divide this by the number of units that were manufactured. If I'm not mistaken, it was 136,000. The units that were produced or the units that were manufactured were given to us as a total of 136,000 rands. So now we just take that total we divide uh, our total cost of production by the units that we manufactured in order for us to get to the cost per unit. So now that is already in response now to the next requirement. So now we don't have to be recalculating some of the things that we have calculated already. That was uh, number B, then we go to number C now responding to the third requirement. Requirement number C, we are calculating production cost per unit production cost per unit or manufacturing cost per unit now our manufacturing cost per unit will be a total of the production cost which we have already calculated already production cost is equal to 810 uh, 26,600 uh, then we say divide this by units produced. Divide this by units produced. And our units produced were 136,000 rands. Therefore now our cost per unit will be uh, the sum of that. Cost per unit. Our cost per unit will be the sum of the two. Cost per unit will be divided by 136,000 rands. It gives us an amount of 60 rand uh, 0 0.08 cents. Let us use only two decimals, 0 0.08 cents. 6 rand, not 60 rand, 6 rand, 0, 0.8 cents, 6 rand, 8 cents. So now that will be the cost to produce one unit based on the information that we are provided with. So now that will be simple like that, or else you could have just simplified it and not even saying production, uh, divide by this. You could have just taken your cost of production, which is... Uh, uh, first by saying, okay, no, that will be right. That will be right again. Uh, production cost 
divide by units produced. Then after we say 826,600 divide by 136,000 just to put it very neat, six and eight cents per unit. That will be the cost to produce one unit. Now we have responded to requirement number C, then we go to requirement number D. Requirement number D, we are required to calculate. Okay, we have done C, we have done D, D, total cost per unit, we have responded to D already. Okay, so that means this was already requirement number D. I hope there's no one that I have skipped. We have done the first one, prime cost, we have done conversion cost, total production cost, and we have done total manufacturing cost per unit. Then now we are calculating the period cost, meaning the non-production cost. The non-production cost, meaning <clears throat> the non-manufacturing cost. The cost that does not relate to production. <laughs> and we are focusing on the administrative cost. That will be our period cost, our non-production cost. Then now we are going to the non-production cost, which is our requirement number E. Requirement number E is a non-production cost. Our non-production costs are made of different as many, many entries to be considered. We had rent that was non-production that need to be taken into consideration. Uh, we had salaries or starting with salaries with salaries that were relating to admin, administrative salaries, 100,000 rents. We start with the salaries. So now meaning this non-production cost, we are focusing on the administration expense administration and sales expenses or administration and selling expenses this is our main focus we start with the labor first the salaries and wages we have salaries and wages and our salaries and wages uh, given to us as 100,000 rents. And I said there was a rental expense that was divided. Our rent, there was part that was not related to production. And that rent amounted to 120,000 rents. So now we need to just record that 120,000 rents. I thought we had calculations yet. There was no need for calculation. Rent that was paid. Then we look for another uh, part of the overhead, electricity and water. 20% of that 200, 20% uh, of that 90,000, 20% of the 90,000 is not related to production, it's a period cost. So now we have electricity and water. We have electricity plus water. And out of that 90,000, we are only looking for the part that was uh, not related to production, which is 90,000. Multiply this by 0.2%, we get 18,000 rents. So now we have 18,000 rents, then we go to the next one. The next one is a telephone, 60% was administrative of that 36,000. So now we record our telephone. These expenses, they don't relate to production. 36,000 rands times this by 60%. It was not related to production. 36,000 times this by 60%, we get to 21,600. 
we get to 21,600 as our telephone. Next one, I think, is insurance. Yes, next one is insurance. We go to insurance and we check how is our insurance allocated among factory overheads and non-factory overheads. 60% is factory, we don't want that. 40% is administrative, we want that. Total is how much. Remember, I've done the calculations for you. If you remember before, where we had to calculate the 60,000 first for us to multiply that by 40%. We said we are looking for the 100%, in other words, of this 36,000. And we said 36,000 multiply this by 100, divide this by 60. And it gave us an amount of 60,000, meaning the amount that was multiplied by 60% was 60,000. Because if you say 60,000 multiply this by 60%, you'll get the same 36,000. So now the total of the cost of the insurance must have been 60,000 rands. And 40% of this will give us the portion that we are looking for. So now 60% multiply this by 40%, it will give us 24,000. And 24,000 of the telephone was administrative cost, meaning a cost that was not related to production, which we call that a period cost. So now that will be insurance. Uh, starting with the 60,000 and we multiply the 60,000 with the 40 percent uh, preferably to show all the full calculations to get all the marks for the full calculations is to say 36,000 runs we multiply that by 100 over 60 then after we multiply this by 40 percent in order for us to get to the 24,000 friends. Remember, after you multiply it here, you'll get to that amount of 60,000 rands. Then you multiply the 60,000 rands with the 40% uh, to get to the 24,000 of the insurance that was not related to production. Now we go to the next uh, non-manufacturing cost. Depreciation, 25% of it was not production related. It was a non-manufacturing cost. So now we multiply that by 25% so that we get to the portion of depreciation that was not production related out of that 120,000. So now our depreciation will be 120,000. We multiply the 120,000 with the 25% in order for us to get to the portion that is not production related. Term this by 25%, we get to an amount of 30,000 rands. We get 30,000 rands as the amount of the depreciation. Then from here, now we go to the last one. I think is the last one. The last one is the commission. Commission. There was a question mark commission on sales there was a question mark and we said commission is based on the sales so now we needed to know how many units were sold and at what price then we get to the sales revenue and we multiply the sales revenue with the three percent and we said we sold our units at 15 rand per unit and the total of the units sold was 120. so now that being the case it makes our life very easy just to say 120,000, we multiply this by the 15 rand of the selling price. 15 multiply this by 120,000, it will give us 1,800,000 rands. So now we have to multiply this by 3%. It will give us, I think previously we got 254,000 rands. But let us check those calculations if they are accurate. So now we have our sales commission. Our sales commission will be 15 rand times this by 120,000 units times this by 3%. And I think it gave us, as I said, 54,000 rands. Let me just confirm the calculations. 1.8 million times by 3 over 100 will give us 54,000 rands. So now these were what we call period cost or non-manufacturing cost. 
the costs that are not related to production, normally your sales and administration costs will be what we are referring to most of the times. Now we will have to add all these figures from 54,000 plus 30,000 plus 24,000 plus 21,600 plus 18,000 plus 120,000 plus 100,000 then we get to 367,000 367,600 and these are what we call administrative and selling cost administrative and selling cost let me write them there on top 367,600 that is our administrative and selling cost meaning non-manufacturing cost remember any cost that is not direct any cost that is not uh, a manufacturing overhead then it fits under the what you call period or non-manufacturing cost now we are done with that then that was requirement number e then we go to requirement number f and see what that requirement has in store for us then we have done number a we go to number f the total cost of operation it will be manufacturing cost plus non-manufacturing cost meaning manufacturing cost which is c in other words we say production cost plus period cost will give us the answer to number f manufacturing cost plus non-manufacturing cost will give us the total cost of operations so now let us calculate the total cost of operation total cost of operations the cost we incur to do everything it will be production cost production cost plus uh, period cost i just want to use their term period cost our production cost we did calculate our production cost and it was eight hundred and twenty six thousand six hundred so we have to say eight hundred and twenty six thousand six hundred our period cost is three hundred and sixty seven thousand six hundred the cost that have nothing to do with the with the production if we add those two it should give us the total cost of operation the cost to manufacture the cost of administration and the cost to sell plus eight hundred and twenty six thousand six hundred and this will be one million one ninety four thousand two hundred this will be one million one ninety four thousand two hundred this will be cost of operation total cost of operation total cost of operations remember they can I require you to calculate the cost of operations per unit if you were to calculate that per unit uh, uh, it would be a bit difficult now because we might have closing inventory I don't think they can require you to calculate such now we go to the last last requirement the last one to calculate the net profit to calculate the net profit or the net loss net profit or the net loss nothing changes this is number g we have our sales remember our sales they are worth one million eight hundred thousand rands where is that coming from we sold our units at 15 rand and we sold 120 thousand if you still remember the selling price for our units that we sold was at 15 rand per unit there the 15 rand and we sold 120 thousand units so now it gave us 1.8 million then now we come to the cost of sales i will not be using my approach now that i showed you previously in terms of how to calculate the cost of sales using the long route or the long approach cost of sales we know that the cost per unit it is six rand uh, zero eight cents and we know that we only sold 120 thousand units so now we just multiply uh, the six rand eight cents remember six rand eight cents is our cost per unit 
there we did have our cost per unit as six rand eight cents and how many units were sold we know that 120,000 units were sold so now that will not change we multiply that by 120,000 units in order for us to get straight to the cost of what was sold multiply this by 120,000 rands as i said to you that we are not ignorant of the fact that we might have to say opening plus production uh, minus closing 729,600 729,600 minus 1,800,000 rands. Minus 1,800,000 rands. We get to 1,070,400. 1,070,400. This will be what we call the gross profit. This will be what we call the gross profit. Then after we say less other expenses. meaning less operating cost the other call operating expenses let me say operating expenses less operating expenses or operating cost meaning non-manufacturing cost in other words remember we've already done the calculation we don't have to go three sixty seven thousand six hundred was already calculated and those were non manufacturing cost 367,600. We don't have to recalculate them again because we have done uh, such above already. So now we can just say minus 367,600. Then this will give us 702,800. This will give us 702,800. 702,000. 800 is the figure then after we draw the lines at the bottom that will determine the net profit so now this will be our net profit for the period or net profit for the year net profit for the year now uh, we we have accounted for that very straightforward question and i like the fact that you were provided with the percentages and now it was uh, it needed someone who is more focused in terms of the calculations now thank you for that guys once again uh, i hope you have understood something out of all this straightforward teaching god be with you thank you